All right, so the issue with this impact driver. Basically, I got this off eBay for, I want to say it was like $32 or something with shipping. Um, basically, I got it for parts or repair. The explanation in the description was that the thing is stuck in reverse and that the front collet is not together anymore. So, um, I got this about a week ago, but I haven't had time to work on it until now. Um, upon inspection, I can tell this has been taken apart. This screw is not all the way together. This isn't um, tight. Um, I want to say there's one other spot that maybe I tightened up already. But um, it's weird because the selector switch is in the forward position, but the unit actually spins in reverse. So it's very odd, but that indicates to me that someone had this apart. They took apart the collet, most likely. Or maybe the pop, maybe the collet came apart and they tried to put it back together and they thought they had to take the whole thing apart. Anyway, um, what the reverse switch tells me is that um, it's in the reverse position, but the indicator is all the way over to this side, which means it can't move at all. You actually see the trigger is kind of pushed over to one side. So um, I'm going to take it apart and see. I, I have a spare anvil from a conversion that I did. And I'm going to see if I cannot get that switch fixed. And if I can get the uh, chuck, the, the collet, back together, it should be a nice, solid unit for really, really cheap. So here's something kind of interesting. The fasteners on the back of this unit are security type, but the fasteners on the rest of it are not. So if you're not familiar with security type, basically it's a Torx bit, but it's got that little pin in the center. So you need a Torx bit with a little... Uh, indentation in it. Alright, so the screws on the back of this are a Torx, uh, uh, Security Torx 15. So let's get started. Who knew an Aldi screwdriver, ratcheting screwdriver, would be so great? This is actually a pretty nice little unit. works pretty well. The teeth are pretty fine. It doesn't take much effort to engage the ratchet, so it's nice and smooth. And then once the screw gets nice and loose, it sort of stops ratcheting, but that happens with any unit. Here's the end cap off. That's interesting. It looks like it has some sort of a little ground wire. That's kind of neat. Um, I like the aluminum around here, around the back motor. Nice and sturdy. That's an improvement over the uh, previous model. There was a couple versions of the previous model. The first version did not have the aluminum casing, uh, and the second model did. So that's an improvement for drop protection and overall um, durability because it's not flexing at all. Uh, much better design there. All right, let's get the rest of these screws out. Oh, is this a different size? Is it? I don't think it is, is it? No, I guess these are T10. Alright, let's switch over to a T10. Alright, I got a T10. Let's see how this goes. Oh, much better. Yeah, I'm curious because some of these I haven't seen it done with an Octane yet, but a lot of people have converted the uh, Gen 5X brushless units to impact wrenches. And I'm wondering if somebody was trying to do that with this, or maybe the collet here came apart and they thought that they had to take the whole unit apart to get it back together, which <clears throat> it wouldn't surprise me, but it's just sort of weird that someone took this apart. Maybe they were just curious like me. Sometimes I'll take stuff apart just to see how it goes together. Um, but regardless, somebody, I guess, returned it. Um, I bought this off of a return store. Um, it's a eBay seller that has a lot of, for parts are not working, tools, a lot of Ridge, a lot of Milwaukee, a lot of DeWalt, um, stuff that people have returned to Home Depot, I would assume. Um, and then they buy it in like a pallet or something. And then they sell it for parts of repair on auctions. So there's a couple, there's probably two or three stores that I know of that do this. Uh, this was on one of the listings. I don't remember how many bids this had. 
Oh, no, wait, that's my mistake. This was not from one of those stores. This was from somewhere else. This one was uh, buy now or best offer. Um, I made an offer stating that it was a bit of a gamble because of the trigger. It's like if the trigger is bad, it's kind of connected to everything. So it's a gamble because if the trigger is bad, you have to replace all this stuff because it's all connected. So on the inside, lots of bracing here. I like that. This is no pun intended, but it's a very... Well, not very, but it's it's relatively rigid. Um, there's good tie-ins. Um, these are actually rubber cushions, sort of. And then here you'll see rubber tie-ins. Let's see what material this is. Uh, it might be on the other half of the housing. So this housing, as per the date code, let me see, that's really tiny. This was made in... January of 2019 so this is only about seven months old um, and the serial number on the tool reflects that it's a 2019-09 so that would be either the last week of February or first week of March so that's when the tool would have been finally assembled and given its serial number. So on the inside um, we have our trigger uh, yep, that's exactly as I thought. See the indicator here? It's not lined up with the selector. So all I have to do is pop this back into the trigger. There you go. There it is. It moves. All right. So the aluminum casing on the motor it looks very nice. It's tied into this plastic core. I don't know if that has to be plastic for conductivity reasons or if it could be aluminum. That would be nice to see though. Um, you got your grip light button. It's just this little button. Controls two wires. That goes up to the um, main panel here. Down here you have your mode selectors and speed selectors. That just goes up to the main panel as well. So this is just a little control pad. Um, you have your main two power leads. These are relatively heavy wires. Pretty nice stuff. Um, this isn't heat shrink, but it's pretty common. I've seen it actually most commonly in um, lamps. I don't, I don't remember uh, what I what I saw that in. So um, basically this thing, it looks pretty nice. Um, this base here, this is actually a separate piece and I've been noticing this on mostly new Octane tools. My guess is that it just provides a more consistent fitment with the batteries because think about it, when you're designing and manufacturing a tool, the one part you have to get right on all of them identically is the battery connection point and it has to fit all the batteries perfectly. Um, they've had some issues with this in the past with the Gen 5X brushless hammer drill, the first version. It's had issues dropping 5 amp hour and 6 amp hour batteries and I think it's also had issues with the 9s. The 3s weren't as bad but they were very very similar. So um, with this base piece it allows them to put this on every tool and make the tool fit the base and then the base fits the battery perfectly. So. Um, I've noticed three different versions of this. This is the most common because it's on the, well actually, no this isn't the most common, but anyway, they have three versions that I've seen. The first version has no belt hook holder and no bit holder on the back. So that one I think, I can't remember if that is on, that's on the Mega Max um, reciprocating saw, one-handed reciprocating saw, that's on the SDS Plus. Um, let me think. What else is it on? There's something else. Maybe there wasn't. Not, not, maybe not for rigid. And then they have this version that has the belt hook holder, the bit holder. This is on the, obviously, Octane Impact Driver, Impact Wrench. Um, I don't know if the uh, drywall screw gun has the bit holder. That, so I heard, I said, I heard rigid say, or I saw rigid say on some Facebook group that the screw gun does have octane technology in it. Um, it just hasn't been branded that way yet. But anyway, um, I don't remember if that one has a bit holder, but it does have the belt clip. Um, and then you have that on, oh, what else? There was one other thing. Maybe there wasn't. I can't remember. And then the other version is just the belt hook holder, no bit holder on the back. That's found on the brushless impact wrench and might be the drywall screw gun, but I, I can't remember. I'd have to look in the store. So anyway, um, overall it looks pretty good. They've got lots of 
um, coating here on the components that helps keep away uh, vibration, moisture, dust. Um, you know, I'm not an expert on this kind of thing, but I've learned some stuff from AVE and uh, Tool, Tool Teardowns does some great videos as well. So this looks pretty nice. Um, down here you'll notice you have your negative, positive, and then you have two smaller terminals. These are the octane terminals that communicate with the octane batteries. So um, these are not found on the older tools. A lot of people have asked, or I, I've seen a lot of people asking lately, are the octane tools and batteries compatible with the older rigid tools and batteries? And the answer is absolutely yes. They've kept the same batteries since it was either 2002 or 2003. Um, but when you pair an octane tool with an octane battery, with the communication that goes on between the battery and the tool, um, supposedly they are able to endure heavier loads without stalling out, hitting overload protection. Um, so that was something I found neat. Um, but you can still use this with a you know 15 year old battery. So it's it's nice to have that flexibility. You know they don't make a caulking gun anymore, but you can still find them you know on eBay or Craigslist or somewhere and you can still use the newer batteries with it so that's that's a really nice thing that Rigid has done so um, enough talk basically this looks pretty good um, the switch is fixed that feels good no issues there um, all I gotta do is make sure that these wires are lined up properly uh, before I put it back together and it should be fine let's see that looks incorrect right there. We're going to move this over. Yeah, it's it's bizarre to me that someone had this apart. I had no idea what was going on, but hey, it was 30 bucks. If I can fix it, that'll be money well spent. Oh, come on. Maybe this is maybe this is too tight. Maybe that's why it's out. All right, that one's back in. Okay, that should be okay. That clears everything. No issues there. We'll tuck this back in. Make sure everything is nice and happy in there. And the housings on these can be a little bit tricky to get back together. This one actually came apart really easily. Um, so I don't think it's going to be too bad. But you just got to take your time. Don't force it. You don't want to pinch any wires. Um, that could lead to issues with the tool, or it just simply won't go back together properly. Um, and then you're like, oh, come on. Uh, this one looks good, except for back here. I think one of the main leads is getting pinched. So just don't rush it, and it will turn out just fine. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's got to get tucked back in there. It's got to get tucked down in there. Alright, that should be the trick. Alright, that looks pretty good. Get the screws back in. Get everything back together. Sort of preset all these screws. I'm just going to back thread them so I don't cross thread when I put them in. solid. I'm actually going to start at the top, that way if I do have any issues, I don't think I will. Everything's going back together pretty well so far. I'm actually going to start all of these and then after they're started I'll switch back over to the ratcheting screwdriver function. Alright, you guys don't need to watch this. This is boring. We'll skip right to the good stuff. Alright, let's get this done. Let's see, now the trigger. See, this is actually an issue I've seen before. It's not engaging all the way, which is odd. That might be because it's been taken apart. I'm not sure. It's not a big issue, I'll get used to it. For the price, it's not a big deal. 
Let me know if you've had that issue on your Octane impact driver. Certainly not a deal breaker for $36, $32, whatever it was. Tell you what though, this will tire out your arm in a hurry. Alright, we're ready for the rear motor cap. This only goes on one way, so don't worry about doing it wrong. Um, that fits snug. Oh, come on. Thread them a little bit. Oh wait, this is the wrong size. Forgot. Forgot. I gotta go back to the T15. Here we go. All right, let's give this another shot. what it's supposed to do. Alright, so everything seems to be working fine except for that switch is still a little bit off. I wonder if that will tighten up a little bit more. Let's see real quick. What, what, what did I do? What have I done? I hate doing that because it's just plastic. I don't want to strip it out, but uh, I wonder if I'm hitting a wire. All right, well that seems to be working okay. I might take it apart again, but I won't film it because you've already seen how it comes apart. Let's move on to the collet. All right, so this is a leftover anvil and collet from a uh, impact driver that I converted to an impact wrench. Uh, basically, took this out and put a square drive in for using sockets. So, um, reached out to somebody at Rigid, and they said that this should fit the Octane model. Um, it looks very similar to what was in there originally. It might be the same. I haven't checked it yet. I should be able to just use the uh, parts on the tip here, which is two ball bearings. You got a retaining clip, you got a washer, a spring, and then the actual collar here. The rest of it is still contained in there. So, these are real fun. Um, actually, let me try something. There we go. So you want to pop it down, just put a bit in there like that to engage it. What you want to do is get under here with your knife blade and avoid cutting your finger open. That's always good. Don't worry, this isn't very sharp. Don't worry, I'm just being an idiot on camera. That's a good idea.
You just gotta work the tip under there. And work it up around. Oh man, so close. All right, you work it up around. Like I said, it's got a spring in there, it's got the washer. So basically the way this sits in there is uh, you have your spring on the bottom, you have your washer on top of there, you have your retaining clips. Very similar to most of them on the market today. Uh, very similar to a Milwaukee, in fact, it might be the same. So now this pops back up and be prepared for the bearings to come out. So this just comes off like that. You have two ball bearings on the sides here dual bearing and um, real quick let's just set them on a paper towel and then compare the two anvils this one looks a little bit bigger which is interesting and really not very good hmm well, we'll try it anyway. All right, we'll get our bearings. They don't fit. Crap. Oh, well, that's frustrating. All right, so if you're wondering if a Gen 5X brushless anvil will fit the Octane model, it might actually fit it, but the parts are not interchangeable. So that means I got to order all these little bits and pieces. I got to order two bearings the ring, the spring, the snap ring, and the washer. Or, or I have another option. I can take it back apart, see if this anvil will actually fit in the housing in the nose cone here. That's possibility. So I'm going to try that before I order parts. I'll do that off camera because there's not really much else to see, but we'll see how that goes. All right, so good news. Um, this is the original anvil here. Um, this fits here, and it also fits in the nose cone. So, um, even though these two parts are not the same completely, uh, this part I will put in the impact driver, and it should work pretty well. So, um, that's good. That means I don't have to wait for parts to arrive. I don't have to spend more money. So, I'm going to get that put in, get it put back together. This is going to be a major pain. Covered in grease already. Oh, well. That's what happens. Alright, well this is going to be a major pain to get back together correctly because everything in here is so tight it's got to go exactly in the right spot. Come on. There we go. Alright, so uh, this will go back here. Oh, and this is... See, that's actually a good thing. Now I can reset these wires. Put them where they're supposed to be. That goes there. No, not that one, the other one. Not that there, the other there. There you go. Okay, slide those down in there. These never stay unless you're just, unless you get them just right. It's a super big pain. I hate it. Oh well, first world problems. Alright, that looks good. Um, basically, this appears to be some sort of a ground. Um, what I'm going to do now is put the selector switch back in. And this whole thing is so tightly wired. It can be very, very tricky to get back correctly without pinching anything. This has to go back on. So, let's do this first. Get it on the trigger. Okay, that's where it needs to be. I 
this was the wire that was binding the switch by the way it was on this side of the switch and it was catching so it's a good thing that I took it back apart found that issue so now this can go back on the motor has to actually tilt up a little bit for this to go back on properly come on Come on. There we go. All right, um, on these, I don't know about others, um, but they have just these two little pins. Actually, these are, they got sawdust on them now. Um, but these just go on the, go in these holes and they hold the motor and the gearbox together. It's a really simple way. There's no way they're going to come out because they're up against the housing when it's all closed up. So it's a pretty simple and effective way to keep these two parts connected. Okay, let's see how all this is lining up. Um, basically, you just don't want wires making contact with moving parts or, you know, stuff, selector switches and stuff that gets moved back and forth and could potentially pinch them or cause a wear point over time. Alright. Gotta plug the lights back in. Okay. Looks like maybe that ground gets routed with the light wires right in that little trench right there. Alright, that's not in any moving parts. Get this red one tucked in here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to use the back side of my knife, actually. Really, it's just kind of like a metal fingernail. It does the same job. Get that black one tucked up over there. Alright, that feels much, much better. Okay, so um, everything here looks good. I just got to tuck this ground wire back in. Alright, that looks good. Tuck in the negative and positive once again. Because I just love doing that. Alright, the rest of this looks good. Let's get it back together and then we will reassemble the correct anvil. Alright, so with that wire out of the way on the inside, much, much better. No binding. Clicks in almost every time. This still has an issue, but it's not, it's not binding. That's good. That would have caused some sort of issue down the line. So, get the end cap back, put back on and get the collet put back together. Alright, and now on to the collet. So this is the fun part where you get to put the bearings in. There's one on each side, which can make it very tricky. Basically what you have to do is get this ring over it. Dang it. I think the other side is still in. Oh, these are so much of a pain. Really, it's like playing golf, and you need to get a hole in one. 
All right, yes, that one's still in. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is push this center part in, and that part will drop down. Now these are not locked in place, but they're staying in place as long as you don't tip it. Next goes the spring and the washer. And finally, the snap ring. Snap ring is fun, but it's actually not too bad. You just sort of work it around the edge here. Make sure it's engaged all the way around. Um, if you want to see a closer up and probably better quality demonstration of how to put back together a collet like this. The Milwaukee collets are very, very similar, if not the same. Um, and VCG Construction just did a video today or yesterday on how to take apart the collet. It's very, very similar. They just have a different color ring. It's got a little different texture, but the snap ring assembly and the bearing assembly looks pretty much the same, except the Milwaukee just has one bearing instead of two on the rigid. So um, if you couldn't really see how it goes back together very well, um, go check out VCG Construction. They run a great channel, and um, they did a really nice job on that Milwaukee Impact video. So, this is good. This is 100% functional now. It ejects like it's supposed to. Perfect. Alright, so, um, with shipping and tax and everything, $32.00. Octane impact plus about a two and a half dollar belt clip. Not too shabby. Alright, so now is the part of the video where I do what every YouTuber does. Um, if you like what you see, and I hope you do, this is I think my third video, um, please consider subscribing. I'm a pretty new channel and um, I can use all the help I can get to be honest. But um, hopefully I'll be doing more stuff like this. Um, maybe not so much repairs. I hopefully, I hope not to be doing so many repairs. That would be nice. But if I do, I will try to get some good filming. It's just tricky and very time-consuming to film stuff like this. So that's why I don't do it as much. But if you guys want to see it, let me know. Um, if you hit the like button, that helps the channel a little bit. Um, and uh, let me know what you think. If you got any recommendations or anything like that, Leave it down in the comments, and um, yep, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.